Welcome to the last and the most important episode of our making of and tutorial how to do this beautiful water theme. This time we will create the boat script. This is where we stopped the last time and the first thing we need is the model. So if you have a look down into the description you will find a link to the github repository where it's all set up the complete project. You can download it and you have, can have a look at it. You should at least download um, the assets. So in the asset folder objects you will find some objects for example the boy or the wood. And you will also find the boat. So you just drag and drop the boat and you will also find some textures for example this floor texture. You will need it for the boat. So we start by just drag and drop drop the boat into our scene. Um, you have to change some materials to um, actually see the floor. For example, you create a material and then just set the floor as a albedo and take the boat mesh and and just drag and drop it here. So there we go. This is our boat. Um, I created this model by myself. Except the character. Uh, this is from a free repository of Blender Arts, but the rest is made by me. So you can use it in your game if you want to. It's just a free gift for you. Let's start by adding our water float script because even a boat is a floating object. We will have to set some float points, so therefore we will just create some game objects and set them here as the float points. We should just set the float points to some positions that are reasonable for a boat. So I set them here. It looks quite right for me. And the next thing we will add is a rigid body and a box collider, just that we can collide with other object this has nothing to do with the uh, uh, water surface. Surface. The values I will use for the widget body is 1, 1 and 0 0.5. And that's it. It should already work as you can see here. Um, sometimes you see waves coming through the floor and you can just check this attached to surface and then the boat will be attached to the surface and it won't drown. So the next thing we will do is to create a water boat script where we can steer our boat. First up, we will introduce some public variables. Uh, a motor, the steer power and the power of the motor, um, a maximum speed and a drag value. And we will use the same twig as always. We create an empty and just set it here where the motor is. I will uh, call it also the engine. And just back and drop it here. So now our script knows exactly where the power source of this boat is. Okay, next up, let's catch some of the references and the start position. And on awake, we will get the reference to the rigid body and the start position. And the start position is the local rotation of the motor, which is basically initial. Okay, now let's go to the update routine. We will use fixed update instead of update because we are dealing with physics here. We start with two variables, the force direction, which is always forward. The forward is depending on where your transform is and in which direction it's pointing. And the steer value is zero, which means there is no steer. To actually change the steer, we will just check the input. If the key code is A, then we will set the steer to one. If the key code is D, it will be set to zero one. You can also um, use some arrow keys here or even a mobile input. Um, if you have a look at the mobile input tutorial, I will put you a link down in the description too. You uh, will see a method where you can really check if a button is pressed or if um, some a direction is used. Then you could set the steer value with a direction. 
Okay, now we have the steer value. Let's add some rotational force. So we will add force at a specific position. And the position is a motor position. So uh, we will multiply our steer value with transform right times the steer power divided by 100 just to have uh, a, a better feeling uh, for the steer power. You could just skip it and type in 0 0.5 here. But for me, uh, it works that way. So just to give you a feeling, uh, the steer, for example, is 1 and the transform wide is here, this direction. And the steer power is a static variable. And we apply the pressure or the force on motor position. So, for example, uh, we will use a force in this direction and because this is the center of mass, the boat will um, rotate in this direction and if steer is minus one it will rotate in the other direction. Okay, we have the rotation done, we have to go forward as well. So we will um, receive a forward vector. So, and we need a specific forward vector. We could uh, just use transform forward, but if our boat for some reason is upside down or just pointing up, um, we just do not want to uh, apply force to it. So we will just scale this transform, transform forward by one, zero and one, which means um, the X value will stay the same. The Y value will be zero and the Z value will still will be the same. So scale just takes every component and multiply it with every component here, which is X, Y, and that. So, and the target velocity is now zero. We will change it now. Or, I don't think we need it. So let's get rid of it. The forward vector should be enough. Um, now we again check the input. And um, let me just get rid of it by adding a using statement. So now we don't have any errors here. So we just check the input if it's W or S, so forward and backward, we will apply a forward or backward speed. You could also check for a button or something like that or a mobile input or just the uh, gamepad. And um, what we will do here is we will apply force to reach a certain uh, velocity. Um, in a tutorial about physics uh, 101, I explained why I do not use the apply force of the rigid body here directly because it can have strange effects. So uh, we will apply the force to this rigid body and we want to go as fast as forward times maximum speed. And this is the power. The power is just a property here so that we can reach the maximum speed faster. We do the same uh, for backward. We will multiply it by minus one and that's it. Okay, let's try it out. Uh, it works pretty good. So, and we can collide with objects and yes. So the values I used are 200, 20 and 15 and they work for me. So there is still room for improvement. But you get the basic idea of how to create a boat vehicle and how you can control it in the water. Um, you can still improve. Uh, you could set um, or add some more kinds uh, lines of code. So you can um, set the position and rotation of the motor depending on the steer. Uh, so you just take the transform rotation multiplied by start rotation. We get uh, this or we have this initialized here in the rake method and just um, turn it by 30 degrees depending on your current steer value and you could have a particle system if you want to. Let's just uh, add it here and just get the reference on the rake. And then you just say, okay, if I have a particle system attached and I press any of the keys to just um, go forward or backward, the particle system should play. Otherwise, it should pause. I don't know if you can see it, but I, if I press 
press left or right you can see the motor is steering and if I have a look in the game window I will see that the particle system is just playing when I press any of the buttons. And I just saw that uh, stop would be the right method instead of pause. Um, so and the particle system looks like this. So here we go. It's just uh, um, basic particle. So the default particle, a bluish color, um, a little bit of emission. So 10 per second in a cone shape. Uh, just pointing backwards and yeah these are the settings I used so that's it I hope uh, you liked this small tutorial series I would uh, like to do more of these short term uh, series in the future just uh, a few or a handful episodes to create beautiful scenes where you can um, basically build a game upon let me know down in the comments uh, which scenes or tutorials you would like to see next and I will make a video out of it. Subscribe to my channel to get more straight to the point tutorials.